With U.S. military aid for Ukraine no longer a guarantee, the pressure on Europe to produce or buy and then send more weapons to Ukraine, it's never been greater. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz says he's confident that Europe will deliver. This is first and foremost about organizing weapons deliveries. Germany is at the very forefront in this regard. Altogether, we have delivered and committed 28 billion euros so far in terms of weapons. That's a lot. But all European states must make a good contribution. I see recognizable progress there. Jakob Ross is a research fellow at the German Council on Foreign Relations. He joins us tonight from Paris. It's good to see you again. How close or how far apart are Berlin and Paris, would you say, when it comes to backing Ukraine? Well, I would say that they are very close in terms of the objective that both uh, President uh, Macron and Chancellor Scholz pursue. They want Ukraine to win. They want Russia to lose. But they are very far apart, so it seems, uh, these past weeks and months on the strategy to pursue to, uh, to, to get to this objective, uh, be it on uh, the, the ground troop discussion or uh, weapon deliveries. So uh, that should... I mean, has been an objective at the Weimar meeting recently and should be an objective at the European summit uh, today and tomorrow. Yeah, the, the Weimar meeting, of course, a meeting between France, Germany and Poland. Uh, beyond the politics, what about personalities? How much is personal antipathy driving the, the split? I mean, is it true that um, Schultz and Macron really don't get along very well? Well, I mean, again, I, I don't know either of them personally so it's a speculative but we certainly got a sense that there's no great deal of sympathy i mean there, there have been several meetings including last october in hamburg uh, with very symbolic images uh, with uh, the two heads of state and government with their respective partners enjoying the view of the hamburg uh, port but um, it, it didn't seem to work so far because uh, every time there were big hopes uh, about these meetings, bringing the two together in, in times of crises. And uh, every time uh, the, the public was concerned afterwards because uh, they contradicted each other in public statements. So, uh, yes, I think there's, there's a certain deal of, of uh, difficulty to, to get together uh, on a personal level and find a working relationship. Would you say that Emmanuel Macron is trying to play the, the role of a geopolitical or European leader and that is something that Germany simply will not accept? Well, I think that uh, President Macron is certainly f feeling challenged by the chancellor who uh, has announced that Germany wants to take greater responsibility in what he called Middle Europa, Middle Europe. So. Uh, Germany and, and east of Germany, uh, basically as a region, um, at a political field, defense uh, policy, security policy that was traditionally dominated by France or uh, the British uh, before Brexit in the context of, of the European uh, theater. And so I think that uh, President Macron feels a challenge to a certain degree mm -hmm. that both uh, Chancellor Scholz and President Macron want to, to position themselves as the leaders uh, in defending Ukraine, and that this is certainly one explanation for the current rift, yes. Yeah, you know, here in, in Germany, uh, politics is, is usually about consensus, especially when we talk about defense. How much are these current German-French tensions driven by differences that we're seeing between the, the German chancellor and the conservatives who are in opposition here when it comes to supporting Ukraine? I think that's... Uh, way more important, to be honest, than the uh, personal differences between uh, characters between Macron and Scholz. I think that mm -hmm. uh, Chancellor Scholz is under great pressure domestically, uh, both by the opposition, the conservatives, as you said, but also from within his governing coalition. I mean, if you look at the liberals, uh, the head of the defense committee, uh, Strack Zimmermann, is viciously attacking him. Uh, the head of the uh, Europe uh, uh, Affairs Committee, uh, a, a green uh, Anton Hofreiter is attacking him. So there's a great deal uh, of pressure in public opinion, both internally in Germany and internationally on the chancellor. And I don't think that Macron has any uh, comparable pressure in the French debate. You know, if you if you follow political talk shows here in Germany, there, there's this broad consensus that Emmanuel Macron is talking a lot 
but delivering little. Do you think that is a view that is shared by um, Chancellor Schultz? Well, it might be. I mean, it's it's uh, speculating again, but it certainly uh, didn't uh, feel very well in the chancery. Uh, he, Macron didn't score points when he was uh, attacking the German position as being timid, of not wanting to to uh, provoke uh, Russia uh, with regards to the cruise missile deliveries, the Taurus deliveries. Uh, that certainly didn't help. Uh, and yes, as a reaction in the German debate and. I would guess, including in the chancery, there's a certain sense of Macron talking a lot, but not walking the talk and not delivering uh, as much yeah. as France could and should probably due to its size uh, within the, the Euro European context. And, you know, there is this uncertainty with a U.S. presidential election coming up in November, a possible return of, by Donald Trump to the White House. Is there frustration in Paris with Germany's uh, apparent view that the military alliance, that NATO, the military alliance with Washington should always take precedence over European military projects? Yes, absolutely. That's a key point, I think, uh, not only to, to French uh, foreign policy, but to uh, President Macron personally, because he wants to leave this heritage in 2027 when he can't be elected anymore. He wants to leave this uh, a European sovereignty, a sense that Europe can defend itself. And to his mind, uh, Chancellor Scholz is betraying this to a certain degree, since Germany has, yes, invested massively in defense, but has procured uh, American systems uh, mostly since the beginning of, of the war in Ukraine. So I think that's a major source of discontent here in Paris, yes. And I just want to ask you before we run out of time, but what do you make of these photos on social media of Emmanuel Macron, the, the boxer punching a punching bag? Uh, who do you think these, um, yeah, these images are aimed at? Well, I mean, first reaction, and I saw that uh, you, you've been discussing this on, the, on your program, uh, uh, makes you think of Vladimir Putin, you know, riding on, on his horse and fishing in, in Siberia. It's the same uh, um, uh, image of, of a strong man, you know, f fighting his fight in, in, in Europe uh, and in international politics. I think it's mostly addressed to a domestic public um, since Macron is struggling with regards to the European elections. But um, I, I wouldn't yeah. <laughs> interpret too much into these, these photos and political communication. All right, Jakob Bronz from the German Council on Foreign Relations. Good to talk with you. We appreciate your analysis tonight. Thank you.